All right, guys, welcome back. This is Dave with Alum House. Yeah, still wearing shades. If you happen to see the last vlog video that I did, you'd understand why. But um, listen, today we're going to jump into a discussion real brief about pre-fader versus post-fader mixes. Uh, I've gotten the question in the comment section a lot. And so we're just gonna dive right into the console. We're gonna take a look at uh, the differences between pre-fader and post-fader, and typically where we'd be using one versus the other. So let's jump right in now. So let's dive in here and talk about pre-fader versus post-fader. So first thing to note is that my firmware that I'm on is version 4.0. Um, more specifically, I'm on 4.02, but anything version 4.0 and higher will get you the individual capability per subgroup or per mix bus to be able to do these settings. But the, the real basics of the way that this console works out is that your signal comes in up here in the very top left and you hit your gain. And then after that, you're gonna hit your low cut. And then typically speaking, you would hit the compressor uh, and gate section. Then you would scoot over to the EQ and then you get to the sends. So it, it kind of flows from left to right. And we can see this, uh, I'll, I'll scroll in here. All right, so looking at the normal channel strip here, what we have is again from a left to right uh, scenario where we, we start out with the signal coming in and then we can see some things for you know inverting or if we have a delay or a low cut turned on then it's going to hit our gate uh, then we keep moving we can see our compressor which is labeled as dynamics then we go further we get the EQ uh, and then any inserts and then it's going to go out to whatever area and you can see on the far right, they give you a visual of, of your bus sends, which is pretty nice. Now, we do have the ability uh, here with the insert. You see the insert is here. If I move this and do pre, then I could put an insert before my dynamic and uh, before my compressor and EQ. That would be beneficial if you were running, say, a, a de -esser. Then I could put the de in before I get to my EQ. And that would be kind of a normal way to, to run that. If you're doing maybe a, a special compressor, you want to have it at the end if you're using their 1176 emulation or the, the 2A, um, LA-2A emulation. You might want to have that at the end. Now the other thing that we can do too is we can actually switch the EQ and the compressor. So if you wanted to EQ first, you can use this to go from pre and post in terms of where your EQ or your dynamics live. So you've got some different features and capabilities within that. But again, the normal process is set up where it's going to come in, uh, it would hit your low cut, it would hit your gate, your compressor, your EQ, and then it would go out. So with that in mind, obviously you do have some flexibility of switching compression and EQ around. You've got insert effects that you can use, but for the real basic setup and kind of default setup, uh, you'll, you'll be kind of working from left to right. Now, all of that stuff happens before you get down here to the faders, the volume faders, okay? And so if I am setting a, a monitor mix, then what I wanna do is have all of my, my stuff come through here, probably, and then before it gets to these faders, it's gonna jump over to my mix bus where I can mix my, my monitor. So if we talk about an in-ear monitor first, in-ear monitors, uh, we're going to want to do a pre-fader mix. So I'm gonna hit here and I'm gonna to go to bus one. This is my, my lead vocal in-ear monitor. So if I select it and then I hit sends on fader, now you can see the mix of what my lead vocal has in their in-ear monitor. So all of the signals for the drums, the bass, the guitars, uh, the vocals, they're all going to come in. They will go through their EQ and compression settings, and then they jump out over here to the lead vocal. This mix is specific 
to that in-ear monitor. Whatever the front of house engineer does for the, the main mix in the house will not impact anything that goes on for this, this uh, musician. So the good thing about that is that they can set all of these instruments and they, you know, they can bring up these vocals, they could go over here and they could add pads or, or crowd mics or whatever they want. They can do all those settings and they're set. They're not going to change at all. So that musician knows exactly what they're going to get in their ears every time they turn it on and start to sing or play. Now that's a pre-fader mix. Where else is a pre-fader mix good for? A pre-fader mix is great for a live stream if you have two engineers. So a lot of my other videos have talked about having one engineer and doing a post-fader mix. So I don't want you to be confused, but maybe we help explain it. In a pre-fader mix, you could have one engineer, let's hit sends on fader. One engineer is mixing this for the house. They're gonna have a mix coming out over here on their main mix. It's gonna go to their speakers in their room and everybody in the room is hearing this mix. Now you can have your live stream, which this happens to be my live stream. You could have somebody with uh, another console or an iPad is more common. They might sit in a different room with an iPad and some headphones on or studio monitors where they can actually be listening to what's going on. They can be living on the iPad in a Senzon fader environment and they can be mixing these these faders remotely from an iPad and it's a po it's a pre-fader mix which means that whatever the person does in the house does not impact what goes to the stream and so what you get then is two engineers mixing two different mixes so that's pre-fader mix Whatever happens for these faders in the front of house does not impact what happens in your mix bus, whether that's a monitor or a stream. So now let's talk about post fader mix. Post fader mix does all the same stuff. The, it, it's still, the signal comes in the same way. It goes through all of these, um, these features up here, and then when it hits the uh, when it hits these faders, it's going to be following what we do with these faders. Okay, so we're going to use an example. We're going to flip down here just to some other channels that I'm not using. We'll use 29 through 32. And so, let's say that my house mix for these faders looks like this. Okay, nice little little arc there. And I want to send that post fader to my mix bus. If I want this to be the exact same mix, what I do is I hit select, I hit sends on fader, and I bring these faders all up exactly to zero. And what that's saying is send a direct copy of this out to my mix bus. Okay, so in my example that I do, this is this is actually my live stream. Uh, this is what my board configuration looks like on a Sunday morning, and we are sending post fader to our live stream. And the reason we do that is because, first off, if I raise if this is a vocal, and let's say that they're background vocal, and this is the lead vocal, and during the service they switch and take lead versus background, then I have to make that switch and I want that switch to be heard in my live stream as well. Okay, so by doing a post fader mix, it does all the stuff up here, but it's going to be impacted or follow the changes you make here for your front of house mix going into that mix bus. Now, keep in mind, if we go back to our kind of initial settings here, when I hit sends on fader, they're all at zero. Well, let's say that the first one is a, uh, is, is a bass guitar, okay? And bass guitar is playing through an amp in the room. And bass guitar, you can see, is pulled down some 
it's not at zero. And so what we need to do is, uh, that might be great for the room, but for our stream, we actually need to increase the volume to make it mix well in the stream. So we can pull this up some. And so automatically now, I'm sending this to my stream, but it's raising this by a couple dB in the stream. So we have the ability to start out with them all at zero, which is a direct copy, and then we can make minor modifications, okay? And so that will adjust the stream, but still when we're mixing in the house, we can move these up and down, and these changes will be heard in the stream because it's post-fader, it's following, it's after this fader volume is set, then it goes to our stream. So if we come back up here to our first layer, this is what my mix might have looked like for my house mix, okay? You can see things well below zero. You've got some things over here pushed up. You've got some other things pushed up here, some things lowered down. But now what I wanna do is hit sends on fader and I wanna see what my live stream mix looks like. Again, this is a post fader mix and everything started out at zero but you can see how there's just little modifications here. It's a little ebb and flow uh, where typically, uh, typically I need more vocal in my room to overcome the volume of the bass and the drums that are in that room. But if I send that direct signal out to my live stream, then it's too loud with the vocals. It doesn't sound mixed properly for the, the listener through their phone or, or wherever, whatever they're listening through. So my vocals are pulled down some Okay, and, and then my guitar right here is playing through a live amp in the room. He's actually raised up some. So we can make minor modifications or drastic modifications. I mean, we can turn things all the way down if we need to, but we can have these uh, modifications made so that it hits the front of house mix. Then it goes through these little modifications before it goes to our mix bus. So where is post fader usually used? Post fader is used most likely in the live stream environment like we're talking about here. Maybe if you're sending this to a cry room or a nursery or your foyer, something like that, you would use a post fader mix. Uh, a lot of times also with effects. So if we're using, uh, we've got a couple of effects down here. And if we're using these effects, um, for a for a vocal, let's say, well, if I turn the vocal down in the mix, I don't want that vocalist to still be going to my reverb and being heard in the room. It would just sound unnatural. So I set up a post fader mix for those effects. One last thing that this can be used for too is if you have floor wedge monitors. I know earlier I mentioned monitors being good for uh, for a pre-fader mix, but if you have a floor wedge, and let's say you have a piano that's playing through that floor wedge, if it's a pre-fader mix, you could turn them down in the house because maybe they're playing behind prayer going on and you want to have that piano still playing, but you want it to be softer, so you bring it down. Well, if it's a pre-fader mix going into their monitor, it's still gonna be full volume in their monitor. So even if you turn this all the way down, you still have stage volume that you're contending with that you can't adjust. So maybe a floor wedge you actually wanna have as a post fader mix uh, so that you can make those adjustments and it not mess up your room volume. Now that all goes into the size of your room and, and you know audio treatment, things like that on your walls. But for the real general purpose, a Pre-fader mix typically is what you're going to use for an in-ear monitor or a live stream mix with two engineers, where a post-fader mix might be used for your live stream with one engineer or for a, uh, a secondary output going to some other room or a floor wedge monitor. All right, so there you go. It's a quick look at pre-fader versus post-fader, when we're gonna use those and kind of what the best practices are for those. 
Uh, if you've got questions, leave it in the comments section below. If you found the video helpful, uh, like all YouTubers, we want you to give it a thumbs up, give it a like on the video, and feel free to share it. Maybe you've got other people in your area or in your organization that can benefit from this information. So feel free to share this video out with anybody that you think might need to hear this stuff. So thanks for checking us out. We will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.